This video is about logic data modeling. So logic data modeling. And the purpose of logic data modeling is if we're doing an analyst type position where we're taking uh, some construct from the physical world and we want to convert that into something for the logical world. So if we're taking uh, something physical, like you see this order table down below, we want to get that into a logical form, uh, something that we can develop a logical blueprint for and use that to construct a computer program. So to perform this, we need to go through three steps. Step number one, we are going to identify identify candidate keys keys two. Once we identify the candidate keys, we'll have to select a primary key. Select primary key. And what are keys? Well, keys are the pieces of data. If we were to grab into, if we were to put this table into a, a bucket and we wanted to find particular data from this table, like for instance we wanted to know oh, when did we uh, rent or when did a Toyota Prius come in on May 4 and all these lines were ripped until I have these these um, pieces and we put all the pieces into the bucket and we select the pieces out of the bucket. Now we can do that at random until we got the piece that we want but as far as a computer search goes and for your time you'd have to pick each piece out and in the worst case situation the piece that you wanted to look at would possibly be the last piece that you pull out. So a candidate key, or if we are to pull the pieces out of the bucket, but we were to do it in a type of a logical sequence or have a reference number for doing that, and that reference number was seen, so before we even go into the bucket, we can see the reference number, and I know that, okay, this car here, the, the Toyota Prius, came in on May 4, and we knew that the transaction ID for that was 001. All I need to do is look at 001 and I can pull that piece out of the bucket. The third step that we need to do to uh, put this over into a logical data model is then we have to normalize the table. When the three steps are complete, we can then look at what we call an entity relationship. Diagram. So the first step we have to identify candidate keys of this table. So taking a look at the table again, I see that I have a transaction ID and that does occur uh, if we fill out the table we can see that we can potentially if we're to take a look at the transaction and I'll write this one out as well that all these other pieces of data do belong to a one transaction ID all the pieces of data also belong to, if I look at the car ID, it's potential that a car ID could be a candidate as well. So if I were to star this one, that could be a candidate, that could be a candidate. If we inspect closer into the car ID, uh, would it be a good primary key? Would it be, would it uniquely describe the data in the same row? and if we look down a bit we'll see that we do get some duplications in that row. Let's take a look at the transaction ID. In this table diagram you'll see that we do have duplicates of the transaction ID. 
But one thing to note here is when the duplicates occur, they do in fact have different IDs for the cars. We don't see if we were to take 004, 004B2 would be unique, 004C3 would be unique, 004E6 would be unique. If I were to somehow collapse the data so that 004 would occur one time, then 004 would be the primary key. And we'll denote that PK. So we're going to go ahead and make this transaction ID the primary key. And by doing so, then we're going to normalize against that primary key. So if we go down to our steps, take a look at our step number three, we can now start to normalize the table. And what do we mean by normalize? Well, the first part of normalization, we look at it, two things. One, so normalization. One, we normalize to reduce redundancy. And it's easy to see that in this table we do have quite a number of, of redundant elements. First and foremost are these transaction IDs. If we were to write down these transaction IDs onto a single piece of paper, we could write 004 on the paper and then repeat uh, the sequence of car ID, car make, car model, and this other information. So here to even yeah even to the to the date in so this could be the repeating information that we have per order so we can repeat these lines so one objective would be to reduce the redundancy of needing to write out these transaction numbers all the time as well as rewriting all this other information that you can see, we could fill in the box and put that information in. The other concept that we want to do with normalization is remove integrity problems. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we go back to the table, uh, for instance, if the car A1, uh, it's a Toyota Prius now, or let's take a look at B2, B2 being a Honda Civic, you'll see that I also have placed a B2 again in another line. If I were to access trans transaction ID 002 and change the car from a Honda maybe to a, a Toyota, that wouldn't automatically change this piece of information down here because we have would have to access that information through 004 in order to make a change to it. So that's where the integrity problem would come in. The other type of integrity, that was an update integrity problem that we could see. There's also the deletion anomaly error that could occur if we want to delete a car from this table we'd actually have to delete the transaction that goes with that car also if we needed to add a car to this table we would actually have to create a dummy transaction to put that car into our table so that we have data about it so let's assume that the only way we know something about the car is if it is in this table. We just can't have a piece of paper, like a sticky note, attached to the end of this table saying, oh, we also got this car as well, because that in itself is a type of normalization, which we'll get to.